Does your iPhone keep getting slower every year? And does it happen usually around the same time that the new iPhone comes out? Well, it's not a coincidence. Let's talk about it. Let's get this out of the way first. I do not hate Apple. I think they make fantastic computers and all of their products are super well designed but I just don't like their operating system. iOS or Mac, it just isn't for me. That being said though, in this video, I will be focusing on Apple because they're the biggest offender of the strategy I'm about to talk about. Planned obsolescence, you've probably heard of it before. One of the biggest problems that companies face is making their products too good. Stick with me here. If the product is so good that it never needs to be replaced, you're never getting money from that customer again. So companies purposely design their products to not last as long so that you come back and give them more money in a couple of years time. This company has been in every single industry for hundreds of years of capitalism existing. I'll link a Veritasium video down below that covers the topic really well. But where you hear about it the most is in the phone space, specifically Apple. Apple has been caught sending over the air updates to their old phones, making them slower and tanking battery performance. And this isn't some conspiracy theory. They were found guilty in court. I shouldn't have to explain why this is bad. Most of America and millions of people across the world buy a new iPhone every single year because of this. And these aren't cheap phones. These are thousand dollar phones. Imagine buying a product for a thousand dollars that gets worse every single year. And then after six years, it's basically unusable. You probably don't have to imagine. It's probably the situation you're in right now. It just violates basic consumer rights. And again, basically all companies do this. They design their products to not last as long, but Apple is purposely tanking the performance of older models after they were purchased. Meaning the product you bought two years ago is a different product now. You shouldn't have to factor that in when you're buying a new product. That strategy combined with their ecosystem kind of locks you in and it makes you feel like you have to buy a new iPhone every year, which just isn't financially viable for some people. Again, if they didn't do this, you'd have a better experience and you'd be paying less money. They're just doing this to milk more money out of you, the consumer. On top of this, iPhones are notoriously hard to repair. If you break your iPhone, you're just better off buying a new one. And guess where that money goes? These are just some of the ways companies, and especially Apple, have you coming back every year to pay them more money. It's an outdated business practice that seems really wrong. Google is now offering OS support up to seven years on their phone, so obviously they've grown out of it. And sure, some Android phones depend on you buying a new phone every single year. It's part of their business model. But those phones are only a couple hundred bucks. And even though they're cheaper, they're still better than the iPhone in some categories. I am in no way trying to say that Android is perfect, but it seems like in that space, you either have an expensive phone or you have consumers upgrade every year. You can't have both. And me making this video is not gonna change anything. Apple is making billions of dollars every year just off this practice. But the EU is beginning to push back. You can already see that they've standardized phone ports. That's why the iPhone has USB-C this year. It's not because they chose to, because they were forced to. But it is cool that iPhone has joined the USB-C club along with every other Android phone for the past eight years. Hopefully one day iPhones will be just as repairable and last just as long as similarly priced Android phones. Probably not gonna happen, but I'll be waiting. Party on dudes.